minor seven flat five, five seven flat nine. What do you do when you see those chords in a blues or in any song? What do you play over those? Well, in this video, I want to answer those questions and I want to show you how to spell those chords and which chord scales we usually use when we see those. So check it out. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your performance and improvisation up to the next level. And for more practical tips with over 500 YouTube videos right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to be notified when videos come out each and every week, tap that bell so you get those notifications. So in my previous videos, I was talking about how to spell chords, how to spell, um, how to figure out which chord scales to use, in particular for a basic blues. And this is a continuation because now, today, I'm gonna to be talking about a jazz blues. Well, what's a jazz blues? Well, if you've heard Now's the Time or Billy's Bounce, those chord forms, those chord structures are what I'm talking about. A jazz blues is not your typical one, four, five blues. All right, like a basic blues. It's got a lot more chords, and some of those chords can be a little bit confusing when, you know, on first looking at them. So let's examine a jazz blues in concert F, and let's go through the chords, uh, spelling the chords, as well as which chord scales to use. Okay, so here we are with a jazz blues, and this is in concert F. So really quick recap, because you could watch my other videos on how to spell chords and which chord scales to use for basic blues. Uh, you'll get more in depth from there. But your first chord is a 1-7 chord. It's dominant 7 chord. And the chord scale is a mixolydian mode. So let me quickly move to this, the diminished 7 chord. And this is where people get a little bit confused and a little bit worried and crazy and whatnot. Okay. When you see a diminished seven chord, it's pretty easy to spell. In fact, there's only three, only three, yes, only three diminished seven chords, okay? This one is a B diminished seventh. First, let me get the sound in your ears. That should sound like a horror movie. <laughs> All right, all the horror movies, you know, that you've seen, the scary scenes, diminished chords, okay? So how do we spell a diminished chord? The formula is from the root, one, flat three, flat five, and double flat seven. So in this case, B, D, F, and that is A flat. A flat carries over over here. Okay, so here's the sound again of the B diminished seven. Now, like I said, there's only three diminished chords. So one that starts on B, one that starts on C, one that starts on C sharp or D flat. And really, if you, if you form, if I wanted to start one on D, it's the same notes as the diminished chord for B. It's D, F, A flat, B. Okay, that's a whole other topic, just know the formula for spelling it, and that there's only three. Okay, which chord scale do we use when you see diminished seven? Okay, so the chord scale we mostly use is called the whole half diminished scale. Well, what? What is that? Okay, what that means, whole and half, means the distance between two notes. It's the interval. So between the first two notes, it's a whole step. It's not B to C, it's B to C sharp. Between the next two notes, it's a half step. There's nothing in between C sharp and D. Between D and E, it's a whole step. E and F, it's a half step. Whole step. Remember, this is A flat, so it's a half step, and finally a whole step. So it alternate, alternates between whole and half, whole and half. Okay, so we use the whole half diminished scale. It sounds like this. <laughs> Now, moving ahead, we're back to our key of F, our 1-7 chord. We know how to spell that, and we know the chord scale. Now, in this measure, in the fourth measure, sometimes you'll see just F7, or you'll see a minor 2. You'll see, a let's say, a C minor 7 here to the F7. This is a 2-5 of the 4 chord, right? Check it out. C is the 2 of B flat. F is the 5. So here you got your 2-5-1. Okay, now how do we 
you know, first of all, how do we spell this? Really quick review. It's one flat three, five flat seven. Okay, sounding like this. The chord scale that goes with this, really quick recap, because I've covered this before, it's going to be a Dorian mode, okay, for this. So Dorian mode means that, well, it's not a natural minor. The natural C minor has an A flat in it. It's going to have an A natural. This chord is going to follow the key signature of one whole step lower, B flat. So that means there's two flats in this key signature, B and E. Okay, so this scale is going to sound like this. And we know how to spell the F7 chord and the chord scale. Now we go to the four chord. All right, everything's normal. That's cool. Here we go with the diminished seven again. Well, we spelled it already, but now let me get a little deeper into this. Why is that there? I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? It does. Check it out. B set, B flat seven. Look at the chord tones, B flat, D, F, A flat. Well, let's compare them to the B diminished seven chord tones. B natural, D, F, A flat. <gasps> Three of the chord tones are exactly the same. That's why this sounds really cool. The motion from B flat to B is chromatic motion. Sounds really awesome, okay? And that's why you'll see that quite often over here. Okay, the next measure, we're back to our 1-7 chord, but now here is where um, there's some variation, and here's where people really get messed up with what they see. This looks like hieroglyphics. Okay, a couple of variations here. I could just have, I could just have an A minor 7 to a D7. That's fine, okay? And if, if what I'm going to say next is really confusing, you can absolutely still do this. However, when you see a 2 to a five, and you've got a one, and it's in minor, more often than not, this is gonna be a minor seven flat five for the two minor chord, and this is gonna be a dominant seven flat nine for the dominant seventh chord. Now, sometimes this extra stuff, the altered stuff, is not written in. It's assumed, so you gotta be careful about that. Okay, so if this is too much for you to handle, just do A minor 7 to D7. If you're starting to understand some of this stuff, absolutely start to experiment with, with this stuff. Now let's spell these chords out first, because let me give you a pro tip before we go on. When you're improvising, it's really important to emphasize the chord tones. We look at chord scales to give us more choices of notes to help connect between the chord tones. And in some instances where we may not be following, you know, thirds to sevenths and sevenths to thirds voice leading, we may want to use some chord tones to add some color to things. We'll also tend to use some chromaticism as well. But please keep in mind, always emphasize the chord tones when you're improvising. And when I mean emphasize, putting them on the down beats, on the stronger beats. Okay, now let's spell this, shall we? It's actually written out first when you think about it. A minor seven flat five. Okay, the formula for a minor seven flat five is the one, the flat three, the flat five, it's telling us that, and the flat seven. So it would be A, C, E flat, because it's a flat five, and then G natural, because it's a flat seven. Listen to the sound of the minor seven flat five. It's not diminished. It's minor seven flat five. That's a sound you're gonna to wanna to get used to hearing. And let me give you another pro tip while we're at it. It would be a really good idea to pick up a keyboard. You can get a cheap keyboard nowadays um, at the time that I'm shooting this video, it's December 2020. There's cyber sales going on all week, if not all month, Christmas sales, holiday sales. Now would be the best time to pick up um, a cheap keyboard. A keyboard that will allow you, they'll give you a bunch of octaves here. You know, at least get like a 61 key keyboard. 88 would be better. And one that gives you a lot of sounds, a lot of... Um, beats and uh, a metronome function. That would be your best bet. And you could get these probably easily for under $100. Now you're probably asking why get a cheap keyboard? If you're a horn player, you're most of the time not hearing context. We play single notes. 
most of the time. Well, actually we play single notes all the time. We can't play more than one note. So when you have something like a concert, A minor seven flat five, this sound, you wanna to try to hear those sounds as you're playing notes from that chord. And having a keyboard and just putting in five minutes a day, practicing on that to get your ears going is really gonna boost your playing like a hundredfold. Okay, so we spelled this chord. Now what chord scale do we use for minor seven flat five? Well, just about 99% of the time, we're gonna use the Locrian mode. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, definitely check out my previous video about which chord scales to use, okay? Because I also go into the modes and I give you um, some exercises that you can do. So minor seven flat five is gonna be, in this case, a Locrian meaning it's the seventh mode of a B-flat scale. Really simple, here's a little trick for you. I see A minor seven flat five, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna go up a half step and play a B-flat major scale, but I'm gonna start on the A. Check it out. A, B-flat, C, D, E-flat, F, G, A. This is a B-flat scale over here, but I'm starting on the A. So Locrian mode for this. Now. D7 flat nine, let's form the chord first and then we'll talk about the chord scale. And this is kind of spelling it for us in terms of the chord. We have from the root, we have, we'll do the formula. We have the one, the three, the five, the flat seven, and now the flat nine. So in this case, it's D, F sharp, A, C, and E flat with this sound. A lot of tension there. Well, that's the role of a 5-7 chord. That's the role of a dominant 7 chord. Now, which chord scale should we use for this? Okay, well, we're gonna use another type of diminished scale. Not the whole half, the other one, the half whole. So, starting on the D, I'm gonna use a half step interval to E flat. Then from E flat to F, that's a whole step. See that, half, whole. I'm gonna do half again. F to G flat's half, G flat to A flat is whole. Half, whole, half. It's the half whole diminished scale. Again, please keep in mind what I said before, that pro tip. It's not like you have to use every note in these chord scales or even every note in the chord. It just, it gives you more choices. And keep in mind, sometimes too many choices can be overwhelming, okay? So don't feel, you know, that you have to use all of these notes. Now in measure nine, instead of a five, seven chord, like we have in a basic blues, it's a minor two. Okay, so now we have G minor seven. And again, same formula for forming a minor seven, and it's gonna be a Dorian scale. All right, so this is following the key signature, no accidentals in here. Next measure, there's, here's where the five chord is, the five seven of F, it's gonna be C seven. We know how to form that. Now we go to measures 11 and 12. So here's another huge difference between jazz blues and your basic blues or your one, four, five blues. In a basic blues, this is just a one seven chord. And in the last measure, it could be still a 1-7 chord, then a 5-7, or just a 5-7, or just the 1-7, all right? But here in a jazz blues, we've got something here called a turnaround. Well, what's a turnaround? A turnaround allows us to go back to the top and repeat the chord structure. If this just ends on a 1-7 chord, that's, even though it's blues, it's not sounding final, but it's still a little, a little stale sounding. It's not gonna lead us back. It's not gonna give us that extra tension we need to bring us back to the top. Whereas if you have a five chord over here, that's gonna do it. And if you have a two chord going to the five chord, that's gonna make it more compelling. And if you have a one to a six, a type of six, to a two to a five, that's really gonna be very compelling and that's gonna help move us back to the top to repeat for solos. All right, so we've got the one seven over here. Now here, there's, there's um, choices here. In this case, it's a dominant six, seven chord. It's still, even though there's a seven here, it still has a function of a five, seven chord. It's just in this key, 
it's the six, D is the six. So it's a six, seven chord because what's happening here, this D seven is resolving to this minor chord. This D is the five of G. You see that? This D is the five of the G. All right. So it, in this function, it functions as a five, seven chord to resolve, but in the overall key, this, we label this as a six, seven. A lot of times you'll see this as a minor six, seven. All right. And then it would follow, um, it would be the function of one, six, two, five. But here, this wants to, this gives more further tension and allows us to resolve to the minor two. Now here's what's really cool about making this a dominant seven instead of a minor seven. Check it out. I've got the raised third. I've got the, the F sharp here. Check out the motion. F, F sharp, G. Nice chromatic motion there. Now, some of you may be saying, oh, but I was told I should not be, you know, emphasizing root notes of chords. Well, here's the thing. If you're, you know, a beginner improviser, intermediate improviser, even, you know, like in, in some of the advanced stages of improvisation, there's going to be times when, yeah, you are going to emphasize this motion because it's great chromatic motion going up. All right. And if you're in the beginning and intermediate stages, you're not going to know, you know, to start soloing on the third or the seventh or extensions until you have soloed using the root notes. Okay. So you have to allow yourself to have those kinds of experiences so you could build up your technique and your hearing. So these last two measures are a turnaround to bring us back to the top. And then we rinse and repeat and we do it all over. Now, are there other variations of chords? Of course there are, but I just wanted to take something pretty basic right now for a basic jazz blues, just so you get an understanding. And I wanted to cover certain types of chords that you may not have seen before, like the minor seven um, flat five and the dominant seven flat nine and showing you um, why those are there. Okay. Now, again, I've got to reiterate chord scales, are awesome to use for connecting between chord tones, for be connecting between chords and different measures, um, for creating variety, all that type of thing. But if it's too overwhelming for you, what you really should be doing is focusing on learning the chord tones for all the chords that are in your uh, basic jazz blues. All right. If you don't do that and you dive right into like chord scales, you're going to miss out and you're not going to know which notes that you really truly need to emphasize. Hey, did this video help you? Well, let me know by giving it a like and then typing in the words below, type the words helped. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for notifications by tapping that bell. So you know, each and every week when videos come out. And if you'd like lessons like this, Hey, subscribe to my newsletter at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. Go to my website. And when you go there, you get a cool freebie, some free videos. And each and every week you get a newsletter with a new video and more information to help you boost your playing up to the next level. Thanks so much for joining me. On that note, take care. Have a great day.